Hey everyone, welcome to this DeFi Nation interview. My name is Clayton Roche. I'm the head of DeFi with Masendo, and I'm here with Roscoe Pattison. He's the CEO of Masendo. Hey guys, good to see you. And we're here with Francesco Renzi. He's the builder of Ardai, and he's going to tell us a bit about how it works. Uh, you want to go ahead and uh, yeah. give, give us a um, overview? Hi everyone. So basically, Ardai is a way for users to invest their money. And the money is invested through DeFi protocols like Compound and other similar stuff. And uh, the feature we have added is that we give users a stable value. So they basically have the same amount they invested. And then they can freely direct the interest. So imagine you invest a thousand uh, DAI. We give you back a thousand R DAI. Okay, and you can spend them, move them, transfer them, lock them up in a contract, do whatever you want. And in the meantime, you are free to basically direct the interest that's generated, right? So let's say there's uh, currently about 10%. So across a year, you'll make uh, maybe 100 DAI. You can choose who gets those, in what percentages, and you can change that at any time. And you can even... Uh, well, basically move it around. It's, uh, it's basically a way to uh, make it, make the whole investment a bit more fungible and a bit more liquid. And uh, it's useful for a lot of applications where there's a contract in the middle. So, so for example, imagine you're, you, okay, I make, I make a bet with Clayton, right? Uh, we're gonna bet on some, so the next uh, US election, okay? Mm -hmm. Just me and Clayton, and uh, we bet a thousand die, and he doesn't trust me. I don't trust him, so we both lock it up in a contract, right? So we can tell this contract to keep a thousand die, so two thousand die in it, and then in the meantime, give us back the interest. So we're basically uh, saving ourselves from the opportunity cost of locking up that capital. And at the same time, we can still use the smart contract, right? I mean, that's always a big holdup with smart contracts. Locking up money is, is uh, inactive capital, which is fine with sound money, but not as good with non-sound money, right? Because you're losing money in inflation. So by doing it like this, uh, I think we kind of solve that issue, you know? So, yeah, so that's why we're quite excited about it. I think it's quite uh, novel. And uh, quite, it's, I think it's going to be uh, useful when people get it, which yeah. is going to be going to take a while. <laughs> um, to use a really simple metaphor, what I kind of saw when you were saying that it's like if I was paying a deposit on my rental for like like a housing rental, the deposit that I'm paying might be able to earn me interest, whilst you know, like I've got my my rental and I've got you know like three or four grand down for my apartment. I still get to earn the three to 400 bucks a year on that deposit. That's pretty cool. Exactly. Um, exactly. I just, Clayton, I'm just going to ask the one burning question I have because <laughs> I feel like it's my only burning question that I have. Um, so you say that I have, I get this thousand, you know, like I put a thousand um, die in and, and I get my thousand R die back and I now want to pay Clayton a hundred of those R die. Am yeah. I, am I in that moment, am I transferring to him the, um, am I transferring to him the 10% of the directed interest? Uh, that depends on Clayton. Okay. So basically we've designed it so that it can easily be layered on top of existing, uh, contracts. Okay. And what we needed to find was a way for contracts that can't interact with our DAP to basically uh, have uh, interest direction, let's say. So basically how it works is when you send uh, some RDI to someone who has never had any, yep. they will inherit your direction. Okay, got it. Okay. So, so if Clayton's you're gonna see all my subscriptions to the naughty magazines that I may exactly. not subscribe yeah. to. He's gonna get my, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna know what I've been up to. Actually, I think the best example was someone who uh, posted this on Twitter, which was just great. And he's like, um, so if, uh, if we can send a donation to Mike Pence, 
where the interest is directed to Planned Parenthood and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, interestingly enough, it's money, it's money with an agenda. Like it's almost like a publicity tool in that sense. Uh, yes, but, but wait, so this is the case that Clayton or whoever you're sending to has never used Ardai, mm. okay? So it's the case for every contract, because contracts in general will not have used Ardai. But right. if, Clayton, if Clayton has used Ardai, then he's probably set up his own uh, interest direction, right? He's probably sending it to himself or to a charity or whatever. So in that case, it's very uh, noble. Clayton's very noble. It doesn't inherit your profits. It, it goes profits. into his. So, so the the Nani magazine revenues will be redirected to charity, is what we're saying. Yeah. Well, if you if you if you have already set that up, yeah. And in oh. any case, once it's in your wallet, you can change that. Okay. So it's painted money. And so <laughs> my my question then is: so I've got a an Ethereum wallet, and let's say I've used Ardai before, and I've I've got a direction for the interest. Yeah, I received some additional RDI from another place. It's yeah. just going to automatically use my wallet settings for directing the interest. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And because that's all uh, in our contract, we can layer it on top of anything. So you know, you could uh, you could um, already have your uh, Connect pool on Mosendo, right? And you can just send it one cent uh, with uh, the direction. And it will inherit it, and then it's locked there. Do you see okay. what I mean? I think so. Oh man, this is this is all sorts of crazy. Could you imagine if? Okay, so obviously, I could wrap this in another smart contract and lock that, lock the fact that it's getting interest from X direction too. Like that's obviously not too far fetched. Um, I, 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 sorry, I got lost there. What do you mean? So, like, if um. If so, Ardai, Ardai as it exists now, like if I transfer to Clayton, it, it transfers to the way he receives. Um, he currently receives uh, his portfolio, so it goes to you know him using. They say compound is the way he does it. He will, yeah. you know, it automatically switch to compound. It would, it wouldn't be like much more of a stretch for me to actually like force it so that it could keep coming from where I was. Uh, had it directed before, like DYDX, say as an example. Um, well, okay, wait. There's you're mixing up two things. So yep. um, the interest generation, we call it the saving strategy. Yeah. At the moment, we don't uh, plan to allow individualized saving strategies because that kind of, in some way, introduces uh, uh, introduces a lot of risk. Because um, imagine. Like, uh, I mean, we might have a whitelist, okay, of acceptable savings options. Yeah. But in any case, the money is not exactly the same. If, we, if each of us has a different saving strategy, the money is not the same. There's different risk. Yeah. So that's not what we're planning at the moment. Um, we really have to look into that, although it would be definitely very interesting. But uh, you, so at the moment, all the money is made, all the interest is made the same way yeah but uh, you get to choose where to uh, spend it let's say so who gets to spend it i see so when you're when you're holding our die you you choose who gets to spend it and and then i guess my I, I wasn't sure about one thing you said which was is there a way to to sort of lock a certain single r die so that the, the direction the interest goes stays the same regardless of the holder or is it only dependent on the wallet no, it, it only depends on the wallet. So if you, um, for example, in the, the settings are basically proportions based. So imagine you're sending 50% uh, to UNICEF and 50% to the Naughty magazines, right? So the only way to control that UNICEF always gets uh, the interest of 100 is to always keep 200 in your wallet. There's no other way at the moment. Sure. And this is also to avoid UX problems, because oh, yeah. they would otherwise be available on a marketplace in any kind of obvious. Yeah, way. exactly. Yeah. So exactly. What, what, in, what inspired this? Like, what's the main use cases you guys see? Well, use cases. I think basically everywhere where there's some locked die, 
or uh, well actually everywhere there is some dye which is not used for speculation um clearly at the moment it's mostly used for speculation but uh i mean i'm talking to mosendo guys right so yeah. you guys you're trying to get it in the hands of people who will actually use it to transact right so when you're using it to transact then using normal dye may not make as much sense as using something like our dye because in that case you would get an interest right so i'm not saying the user should get it necessarily but i think it's a great way for app developers or other services to kind of layer on top of that and have a business model out of the you know out of the box sure. so actually i'm hoping uh that's who will adopt this is payment channels i'm hoping we will see adoption from uh layer two solutions we've, we've actually already talked to a few uh because obviously if if they have entry and exit contracts right the entry contract is basically a pot of money mm -hmm. and if they can monetize that pot then it's good for them to uh pay for maybe gas fees for the users or to pay for their server costs or whatever mm -hmm. and of course we're hoping people will use it for the donations uh, aspect of it because you know people are good and they like donating money sure. so hopefully uh you know people will actually use that as a funding mechanism for their non-profits non you know just uh, when you have some uh, spare die make us get some money off it it's not a big deal for individual users really like if i ha have a hundred die in my wallet what i mean i'm gonna make 10 bucks a year you know i maybe a buck a month if i'm lucky it's not it's not a big deal but if you have uh, a thousand users directing a hundred die to a charity then it's you know immediately you're looking at some actual numbers so it's it starts to get more interesting so i think uh, for small quantities people will not uh, look at the investment and more look at the cause but sure. yeah that's what we think yeah yeah i really appreciate that use case i'm i'm curious if you've identified cases where die right now is being used on certain platforms um, where there's kind of an opportunity cost of interest earned that might otherwise be earned. Is, is that going on already? Maybe with prediction markets or anything? Yeah, so prediction markets, um, like honestly, we haven't spoken to any, anyone with Augur yet, but clearly they are moving to die, right? Yeah. So they're moving to die for very sensible reasons, you know, because people don't want to speculate twice with both the price of Ether and the uh, the prediction so they're moving to die but then you have the issue because markets take a long time to uh, resolve so if if that resolution time could be also generating a yield it, i'm sure it would be much more interesting for them um again we haven't spoken to them yet uh i've thought a lot about this and it does have some game theory implications because it whoever's getting the interest has a some veiled interest in the market taking forever because they oh, get more right. sure. So you have to kind of figure out how to make it work, but I think it would definitely be a very interesting use case. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. Um, uh, yeah, that's that is a cool use case. Certainly, if we can yeah. we can capture some value there instead of just uh, yeah. locking it up for no for no reason. Yeah. For so, no reason. Exactly. This, the second part of that question is kind of like, why do you guys want to do this? Like, why is it interesting to you guys specifically? Uh, no, actually, it, I don't think it is. It was just a good idea we had. Like, we liked it. Um, <laughs> this this like, is a deep, meaningful why, opening our hearts and bearing I mean, the world. Honestly, <laughs> I wish we could think of a business model, but I can't. Like, we thought about charging a fee, but it doesn't really make sense. Um, people would just fork it. And I think this kind of thing only works if everyone uses it, right? If everybody uses the same standard, then you can send it to Clayton and he will know what it is and won't have to kind of understand how it works, right? Yeah. And the only way to achieve that is to have no fees. So we, we built a protocol with no fees. Um, and what we are planning to do is to have a 5% fee on the UI so if uh, people use our UI, then they can pay us a 5% fee on the interest. So, you know, you make a thousand dollar donation that's, that generates maybe a hundred bucks a year and we take five of those a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a big deal. 
Uh, it's not going to, you know, change our livelihoods at all. But uh, I think it will be interesting because we're planning to direct it to a DAO. So, you know, we can we can have some kind of way to uh, build up in the future, even if we don't have a business model ourselves. Mm-hmm. At the same time, look, we're in DeFi. We want to build stuff. We want it to work. And I think this is going to be useful for people to actually uh, use Stellar. things, you know, and also the payment channels uh, use case. We've, we've talked to uh, Arjun from, uh, from yeah. Connect. Like the, um, the main problem, if you're uh, targeting no coiners, is probably onboarding them, right? So getting the money in. And if you have a way to generate some yield off the lock capital, then maybe you could pay for gas fees. And the same is true for, uh, you know, uh, layer two solutions. The same is true for a lot of that. You know, everybody now is talking about meta transactions, trying to pay the gas fees for their users. Yeah. And I think uh, we could actually work very well with uh, meta transaction protocol because your users are sending you money you get a yield off it and you invest that yield so that they don't have to spend money on gas. Mm. So I think it, it kind of really, um, really hooks in together very well. So Absolutely. hopefully people will, uh, will see the value there and try and uh, integrate it with, uh, you know, with their own apps. So tell me a bit about like who's on the team, like you're on like the UI side of things and like who's the, who's the, other, who's the other three crazy people enough to work on something? Um, I, <laughs> uh, actually, there's only two of us. Oh, two uh, of us. Sorry. Yes, yes. No, we're a very small team. We we work better together, and uh, we're quite effective, I would say. On this on this project, there was two of us. I mean, we work with other people, but uh, this one was uh, kind of because there's no money involved. Uh, we couldn't get other people to <laughs> to follow us. But uh, so the other guy is called uh, Meow. He's uh, he's been my partner for a while now, uh, building uh, Ethereum applications. Uh, he's based in Estonia, which is where our company is based. Yeah. And yeah. Cool. Uh, he's a great developer for uh, Ethereum smart contracts. I mean, hopefully people will have a look at them and see that they're really good. I mean, we've we've done some preliminary uh, checks on security, and it's all come out clean with tools and stuff. So. I'm quite uh, optimistic, uh, but yeah, we still we still need to get an outside audit, so sure. we're waiting on that to release the mainnet. Got yeah. it. Um, so I'm curious, uh, uh, is this is this going to only be built through Compound? Basically, this is only something that could tie in with CDI. No, actually, uh, this is in, coming out soon. We've uh, we've built this recently. Um, basically, the um, what we call the saving strategy is completely abstracted. Okay. So it's not uh, in the contract. The contract points somewhere else and this other contract defines where the money is uh, spent and invested in. So initially it's compound. They have the best documentation. It was the easiest thing to integrate at the beginning. But no, there's lots of other protocols where in some way, there's no loss, which is the only, you know what we are looking at. So protocols which have a no loss policy and uh, interesting yield are ripe for uh, integration. So you know things like uh, Fulcrum or um, DYDX or uh, possibly uh, Nuo Network, although there are some doubts there. Okay, and so. Uh... But but like uh, Uniswap liquidity pools wouldn't probably qualify as no loss. No, yeah. no, I don't think so. Um, as I said, we're planning to have a DAO, so uh, maybe the DAO will you know produce some valuable analysis, and we might think allocating a percentage to Uniswap might make sense. But Uniswap does lose money sometimes if it's not actively managed. So I don't think it would be the first place we would go. No. I see. Cool. Because uh, we have to guarantee that uh, the money is always backed and that the money is uh, generally redeemable. Mm-hmm. And to make it redeemable, you have to have these pool-based protocols. So, yeah, Uniswap, I don't know. Sure, sure. It's a bit um, tougher. So what I, what I really like about Ardai, um, like – I think I discovered it about 24 hours ago on Twitter. 
Uh, and like a lot of people were talking about it all of a sudden. And I think the appeal in the DeFi space is it, it really fits into this money Legos meme, which is this idea that we have these different financial tools that we can combine together and build, build like really cool things that the makers of each tool didn't even anticipate happening. And that's what I see with, with our die. I think that's, what's exciting about it. Um, yeah. I'm curious what, what people could expect as far as timeline goes, if you guys have a, a UI yeah. launch. That's a bit hard to say at the moment, honestly. Uh, we were we really wanted to release this before ETH Berlin because uh, we wanted people to uh, you know have a look at it and maybe think up some cool ideas and hopefully you know somebody will even uh, decide to contribute in some way. Um, we actually already had a person asking if they can uh, if they can hack on this, if we have any ideas that they could work on and stuff like that. So that's really exciting. Uh, as you said, it's a money Lego. So, you know, with Legos, you don't just look at the brick, you have to build stuff, right? So we're hoping people will use this to build other stuff. And that might even influence the design at this stage. So, you know, if there's some cool use case that we have to build around, we might decide to change the design. Before releasing to mainnet, as I said, we really want an audit. Like, uh, we hope this will manage a lot of money, right? So if it's going to manage a lot of money, we can't risk uh, anything. So that's paramount. At the same time, because as I said, we don't really have a business uh, model for this. Uh, that's likely to take a bit more time um, because we have to find a way to fund the um, audit. We might decide to fund it ourselves, but it all depends on uh, you know market interest and what we see. Uh, going forward, um, we will definitely get an audit, but it might take a bit longer than uh, some other commercial teams might take. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully, I think uh, within a few months, we will be out on mainnet, unless we decide to overhaul the design for some reason. But uh, in general, the smart contracts are about 95% there. Uh, the only thing we need to fin finish uh, implementing is the DAO itself and we want that to be ready on launch so that's the the main uh, hold up on that side for now I see Got it. great um, super interesting it is super interesting yeah. um, I think the what's like how did you end up in crypto originally friend like how did you end up in the DeFi space how did you um, found this Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole I ended up in crypto because of a uh, shitcoin ICO. <laughs> I was... Um, no, that I'm, didn't happen to anyone else. No, 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 no none of us, right? <laughs> Came for the money, you stayed for the people. Yeah. No, um, I, I went to a local meetup when I was living in Estonia. And I met a few people and they were working on an ICO. And we talked a bit, they hired me. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I got in. Um, it actually never launched. So I'm lucky enough that I don't have, I don't have, uh, you know, people uh, running after me, but, uh, <laughs> but I learned a lot in the process. I really did. Um, yeah. so I'm very thankful for that because I it really got me to, you know, look at everything available, what's out there, what we can build on, what we should look out for and, Eventually, when uh, you know when DeFi started coming up, the scene, the this meme, it was it just blew my mind and got you know got lots of ideas going and you know this is it, it's just I think it's such a natural fit for Ethereum. Yeah, that it's, uh, it's something we should really capitalize on. You know, yeah. I mean, especially if it's oriented at making a real uh, use you know i'm sure. i'm a bit tired of all the speculation stuff i'm not a trader myself i find it a bit boring um so what i'm interested in is actually seeing people um build stuff that people use and you know that solves problems like what you guys are doing yeah. right so yeah, sure. what we build in my view like uh how i see it is a way for people to fund their ideas fund their fund themselves off the back of speculators so yeah. that's you know that's why i think speculators are great but the money they generate should in some way be funneled back to the community and that's that's one of the reasons we built our die 
Awesome. Yeah, I like I like hearing that, Fran, and and I'm I'm really right there with you. I I actually joined for some of the same reasons as you did, and stayed for some of the same reasons, and it was kind of the discovery of Dai and DeFi and Nascendo that got me invigorated about crypto. Like I just, I really see a great use case here for it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really with you there as far as finding something that I think is going to add some serious value. So it's, it's a really cool movement in crypto. For sure. Yeah, I think yeah. the, be the best actors in the space uh, have grit and determination and, and they've all got a little bit of glass they're still picking out of their elbows because they crawled across <laughs> each other. Um, <laughs> so, so much fun. <laughs> yeah, so much so. So, okay, so someone's, you know, listening to this, this is the first time they've heard about you. They're kind of, you know, they want to go into the rabbit hole a bit deeper. How do they find out more about uh, Ardai? Like, is there anywhere they can get started with it right away? Like, where, where are things at in terms of, like, people playing with it? Yeah, so uh, we have our website, which is redeem.money. Sure. Um, and there you can access the DAP. Uh, the DAP is running on um, Rinkaby at the moment, so it's on a test net. Yep. Um, we don't have a faucet for ETH test for Rinkaby uh, ETH, but we do have one for Rinkaby Dai. So you know, you just have to find a way to pay the gas costs, but then you can uh, you can test it out completely. You know, you can uh, create your own pool, put money in it. Uh, move money around, see how the hat, the pool inheritance works. You can uh, withdraw the money and see that you get exactly the same money you put in. You can withdraw the interest. Uh, you know, you can basically play around with that uh, as much as you want. And uh, I think if you want to follow us uh, on Twitter is probably the best place. Uh, there's also a Telegram group we have, which is uh, Get Our Die. So if anybody wants to join, please, please do. And if anyone's going to any hackathons and wants to uh, build on this, please join our Telegram group. Uh, we, we're going to have some uh, ideas coming up there, you know, teams forming around the ideas. So if you're going to any hackathons, please definitely come and join us in Telegram. Nice. And, uh, and yeah, and maybe follow me on Twitter if you want. I'm probably the most... Uh, the person who talks about it the most. <laughs> so, uh, you know, for now at least. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you want more information or if you have any questions, just ask me on Twitter and I always answer everyone. So. Great. Perfect. Thanks for those those links, Fran. Uh, yeah, I hopefully you can write them down or something. Cause it's yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll post them under there um, in the comments. Uh, Fran, I like, to, I like to ask people when you go to a holiday dinner with family and like a distant uncle who doesn't know about crypto, he asks you what you do. I'm curious how you answer, answer that question at, at holiday dinner. I've tried a lot of stuff. Uh, <laughs> I recently started saying, actually, I don't have any uncles. Um, okay. You know, that's a different stories. All my uncles. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, I usually say nowadays that I would, build financial applications in the cryptocurrency industry, which sounds really ominous, so people stop asking immediately. <laughs> That's a good solution. <laughs> they just go, oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's <Okay>. oddly specific. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Cool. Uh, well, yeah. thanks for taking the time, Roscoe. Did you have any other questions you wanted? To, any, any burning questions? No, I'm just keen to see how you guys do. Like, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that are keen to, you know, play around with it. So, um, yeah, super, like, let us know in the DeFi Nation group, like, when you when you go live on mainnet and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the, the, the people in this group are really, uh, you know, hungry for info. And, and um, obviously, if anyone has any questions for Fran, chuck them below this video. Um, I'm sure Fran will be in the Facebook group as well and can answer a couple of them as well. So... <laughs> Facebook. I don't, I, I don't, I don't do Facebook. No, no, I, I will. I will. I we'll, 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 arbit we'll arbitrage the questions from Facebook. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'll, join, I'll join the group. I just oh. might take a long time answering because I don't okay. use it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> okay. Some people have a twitch when you say Facebook. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry for this. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, yeah. friend. Great to have you here. Hey. Great talking to you guys. Thanks for setting it up as always, Clayton. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers.